Do you ever stop and think to yourself, while observing the world around you or while on a stroll outside, plants grow way too slow? Well, I had this question about two and a half years back. And today, I'm going to share with you my journey on how I tackled that very question. Greetings everyone. I'm Joel Jiji and I've been doing research in the field of plant growth and development for the past few years. Mainly, I've been trying to solve two problems. Firstly, food scarcity. The rate of food production cannot really keep up with the rate of increase of the population and its needs. And it's not that we don't have enough food on earth, it's that it's not distributed properly or equally. And due to that, there's food scarcity in many parts of the globe. And secondly, slow afforestation. As we speak right now, there is deforestation happening somewhere around the world. And as you know, deforestation is a very fast process. And compared to that, afforestation takes years to bear fruit. It could take up to 10, 20, 30, 40 years to have fully grown trees again, and in some cases, many more years. So, what's the root cause to both of these problems? Well, I can easily say it's mismanagement caused by human beings. It's our own fault. We are not managing our resources properly. But well, we have known this reason for a very long time and have been trying to solve the problems at hand. But as you can see, and as you know, we aren't able to make much of a difference. And we just keep blaming ourselves over and over again. So, let's try to find another problem that can solve these issues. Well, let's see. Plants grow way too slow. What if there was a way to make plants grow much faster? And I've been doing research in this field. So what if I told you I was able to make plants grow up to 10% faster? That would be good. What if I told you I was able to make plants grow up to two times faster? That would be great. And what if I told you I was able to make plants grow up to three times faster? That would be astounding. Well, I'm proud and happy to tell you that I was able to make plants grow up to four times faster. Let me put that into perspective. Suppose a plant takes about one whole year to fully grow and bear fruit. I will be able to make that plant grow fully and bear fruit in less than three months. So from one whole year, to three months. We can have four product cycles, four times the productivity, four times the growth. Well, since I've put that in perspective, you might be having a question in your mind. How? With what? How is this even possible? Well, it's because of a stenchy old gas that we know as hydrogen sulfide. Well, we know hydrogen sulfide as being stinky, having the smell of rotten eggs. And well, other than that, we know that it's a byproduct in many reactions that we do in high school. And beyond that, we know well, it's a byproduct in, you know, natural processes. But other than that, we don't really know much about hydrogen sulfide. But in recent research, there has been speculation that hydrogen sulfide could be involved in the signaling process within the plant. Basically telling the plant to produce this much hormones at this time. So I thought to myself, what if I supplied hydrogen sulfide exogenously? Because well, hydrogen sulfide is speculated to even help the plant in defense responses and make the plant grow better as a whole. So then, 
I thought I'd start off with a few experiments. I started off with using beans. And usually beans take about four weeks to grow and bear fruit. Uh, at least the sample which I was using. And my experimented sample with which I supplied hydrogen sulfide was able to grow fully and bear fruit in one week. From four weeks to one week. And well, I was surprised. And that's when I knew that I was onto something big. Something that could change the world. So then, I continued with a lot of experiments. Doing research every single day. Testing out the soil. Testing out the plant samples. Testing out what differences that we can gain. But today... I'll be talking about my most recent experiment, and that's using okra plants, or most, uh, more commonly known as lady's finger. I had about 95 plants, and I split them into 10 groups, each group containing 10 plants and the last one containing 5 plants. I kept those 5 plants as a control group, you know, the group which experienced normal growth without any sort of changes done to them. The other groups were supplied with varying amounts of hydrogen sulfide every single day. And as you can see through the graph, the growth difference is double. And well, this graph is analyzing height. And it was not only the height that increased. As you can see from the pictures, the plant looked much healthier. The, st uh, the stem girth was more, the leaf span was more, the health of the fruits was much better, the fruits were more juicy and overall the plant was more healthy. And as a bonus, it grew faster and produced fruit faster. I truly believe that my solution and my research can lead to the second green revolution. It can change the world as we know it and change the world of botany as a whole. And well, you might be thinking, how do I start thinking about this? Like, you know, hydrogen sulfide, why would you relate it with plants and its growth? Well, I'll tell you, it all comes down to creative thinking. Many of us I mean, all of us, really, are creative beings. What differentiates human beings from every other creature on earth is that we are creative. We have creativity within us. And if you think about it, many innovators of yesteryears let their curiosity explode in them. They didn't lock themselves up. They were not limited to the information that they were provided. They went further. They explored more. We are living in the world of the internet where information is at our fingertips. We shouldn't lock our minds and just be fed information that the schools want us to know or any other organization wants us to know. You want to innovate? You want to bring in change to the world you need to explore further. Let your curiosity explode itself. Well, all of us had this part of our life a long while back. You know, that curiosity which explored itself, which ran freely. Sadly, we lost it right after our innocent childhood days. We should bring that back. If you think about it, Innovators would have been known as crazy people doing random things with, you know, random things around them. But today, we respect them and appreciate them for their contribution to human society. We should go crazy like that. Let our curiosity free. Use the information that is there for us. Keep thinking. Keep thinking creatively and try to make an impact on this world. Remember, all of us have a flame of passion within us. Let that flame light 
the world ablaze. Thank you.